Welcome Japanese woodblock print collectors and enthusiasts. Today we're going to take a deep dive into a dramatic and violent print series, Kunichika's Good and Evil Demon Mirror, or Zen Aku Kijin Kagami. This woodblock print series was done in the middle phase of Kunichika's career, when he truly established himself as an artist. The series was published by Tsunoi in 1868 and focuses on real and legendary street toughs, bandits, and samurai, ranging from the Heian period, which was about 790, to the 19th century. Some of these characters were just plain evil, and others were like Robin Hood bandits fighting for the good of the common people. The people depicted in these prints are famous kabuki actors playing the part of the character. In all cases, we can see Kunichika inject the dramatic aspects of the kabuki theater into these images. Although these prints aren't numbered, I went to the Waseda University Archive and some other online resources and identified 36 prints total in this series. So let's dive in. What do we see? The prints are the standard Oban size. There is very little descriptive kanji on the prints. There is no kanji on the outside borders. The title cartouche is printed with a multicolor red, white, green background. The character's name is on a red cartouche and then Kunichika's standard signature, the name of the publisher, carver, and the censor stamp is grouped together. The carving of these prints was expertly done because Kunichika collaborated with the best publishers and carvers. The compositions of the prints are similar to many of Kunichika's other print series of actors, or Yakusha-e. The main character is captured in a one-half length portrait from the torso up. As you can see in these examples, the characters are primarily wearing blue and white kimonos with bold and simple patterns. This consistency in color palette really helps to unify the prints. The poses are very active, energetic, and violent, with the characters in the midst of battle or conducting some dangerous mission. Facial expressions are determined and focused, matching the character's dynamic poses. The majority of the prints have sparse, monochromatic, black and gray backgrounds with bokashi shading. Bokashi shading is a technique of applying ink that creates a color gradation from dark to light. This allows us to see the wood grain of the blocks in the backgrounds of many of the prints. Some of the backgrounds have layers of shadowy figures and landscape to help set the scene, like one would find on a kabuki stage. You'll notice different types of weapons and objects in these prints. Here are some that you may find interesting. First, there are many types of Japanese swords depicted. The katana is the longest, wakizashi, the mid-sized, and the tanto, the shortest. The two swords of the samurai, the katana and the wakizashi, are worn inserted in the belt with the edge facing upwards. Western historians have said that Japanese katana were among the finest cutting weapons in world history. This man is holding what I think is a bohia. It's a handheld rocket launcher. Gunpowder was used to launch fire arrows. It was effectively used against ships but could be used in regular battle as well. There are many types of chain weapons. This may be the kusari fundo or manriki, consisting of a length of iron chain with a weight at the end. The naginata is a pole weapon that was originally used by the samurai class of feudal Japan, as well as by foot soldiers and warrior monks. The naginata is the iconic weapon of the onamusha, a type of female warrior belonging to the Japanese nobility. This weapon would be my number one choice in a zombie apocalypse. The kanabo is a metal stick or two-sided club that is spiked or studded. The black lantern some of the characters are holding is called a gando. It's ancient Japan's version of a flashlight. It's made so that the candle inside always stands vertically, even when it's tilted, because it's supported by two gyros. So regardless of how the gando swung, the candle would keep lit. And finally, the yumi is the traditional Japanese bow. The yumi was an important weapon of the samurai warrior during the feudal period of Japan. 
It's typically shot with Japanese arrows, known as ya. Now let's dive into some of my favorite prints from this series and the backstory behind some of these characters. This is Ishikawa Goemon, one of the great legendary folk heroes of Japan. He was an anti-authoritarian figure, challenging and or attempting to assassinate the great leaders of that era. His execution was one of the most famous. It is said he was placed in a cauldron of boiling water with his son, but he held his son overhead as he himself was boiled alive. This is Banzuin Shobei, a historical street tough of Japan's Edo period, who supposedly fought against injustices and to protect the common people from the abuses of the samurai aristocracy. He established a samurai for hire business in the Asakusa district of Edo. He was eventually killed by his enemy who trapped him in a bathhouse and increased the temperature of the water. When he tried to escape, he was stabbed to death. You can hear a lot more about him in my video on the Otokodate. This print shows Tsunada, wife of Ebara, holding the head of Ichi Wakamaru, a man who sacrificed himself to save Kinsato, the secret son of the Shogun. If you notice, she has the blackened teeth of a married woman and also two Buddhist rosaries on her right wrist. This is the bandit Oni Azami Seikichi. He was one of the all-time bad guys of Kabuki. In one play, he falls in love with a young girl. They go on a crime spree, which ends in tragedy and a double suicide. He is often pictured with his face partially covered by a spotted cloth. One of the interesting things about this print is that we can find the print with and without this thistle tattoo on his arm. Both are from the same publisher. I don't know of any other print in the series that has two versions. In this print, we see the actor Nakamura Shikan IV in the role of Yamanaka Totaro. I don't know anything about him historically, but I love the way that his body is contorted as he's raising his club, the bullets whizzing by him. And this bloody bandit is Benten Kozo, an honorable thief who disguises himself as a woman in order to rob a clothing store. Benten Kozo is believed to have been based on a real-life thief from the island of Enoshima in Kanagawa. Kunichika designed a series one year before this in 1867 called Mirror of 32 Good and Evil. It was published by Wakasaya, but that earlier series was less cohesive and more traditional in design. I'm guessing it was well received and Kunichika thought, why not embark on another set? I'm very glad he did. You can see our collection of this series on our website at miagallery.com. I hope you've enjoyed this deep dive. Please like and subscribe and happy collecting.